All right, welcome back to this channel. Um, huge thank you on this project to Todd Huth. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. T-O-D-D-H-U-T-H. Uh, he has sent over the last year a couple of amazing bowls and burls uh, to help support what we're doing. And this was a big chunk of uh, cherry wood, uh, cherry wood bowl, or burl, excuse me. And he... Uh, Shipped it on his own dime and sent it over, and we've I've been sitting on it for a minute, waiting to decide what to do with it. So thank you, Todd. Thank you, thank you. All right, this is a new resin provided by Total Boat. As you saw there, it was the it's the Fathom uh, deep uh, pouring resin. They just came out with this this summer, and I highlighted in the instructions there that you can pour up to three inches thick. Which is huge for me. I'm always doing um, really big projects. This one wouldn't fit in a five gallon bucket, um, so I couldn't get it in my pressure pot. And you need the really long, long setting resin to make this stuff work. Otherwise, you get lots of bubbles and a really hot reaction. I've I've learned that if you pour over the manufacturer's depths, that makes a really big exothermic reaction which boils your wood and you get cracks and horrible stuff so um i'm excited to try out this total boat um thing now as i mentioned i couldn't get this in my pressure pot so there are some little bubbles in it which was i was really unhappy with but if you look closely it wasn't moisture in the wood because uh, they're just uniform bubbles and they just couldn't come out of the uh, suspended liquid so I have in my possession a vibration table that I'm gonna that I bought for this purpose. Um, um, this stuff, after about, just sitting at room temperature, which is also an incredibly important part, is to get at the temperature the manufacturer recommends. So room temperature, about 70, 75 degrees, is a good good place to be. Uh, so I let this set up in my house. Um, at about 24 hours, it was quite thick. At about two days, it was like rubber, and after about three days, it was ready to turn. And it turned like a gem. You watch me do this, you get you get the uh, silly string effect of the, it coming off nice and soft as opposed to chipping, which happens when you put it in a pressure pot or use some of the faster setting resins that get super hard. So, you know, if you've been following my channel for the last... Man, when did we start this thing? Oh, been doing this seriously for the last 18 months, maybe maybe a year at most. Um, I've tried every derivation of resin. I'm always trying things that don't always simply work as far as stick it in a pot and or a bucket and stick it in a pressure pot, right? And I like to do the clear stuff, which is a real challenge because it brings out those bubbles for all the world to see. So, um the challenge now is stuff that won't go in a pressure pot to get rid of the bubbles and it's I'm down to the fact that it's not moisture in the wood causing the bubbles because this this burl from Todd was you know perfectly dry um, and it and it really did help to have a long thick setting resin so I didn't get the exothermic problem um, and I could do it as thick as I wanted so that wasn't the issue. I think simply now mm -hmm. it's I've got bubbles suspended in the resin that just can't come out because it's just barely viscous enough to hold on to them. So it's going to be either this vibration table, see if that works, or we're going to go to a vacuum um, system where you uh, stick the resin in a vacuum, uh, pull out all the bubbles, and then use the resin. Uh, something tells me that's what I'm going to end up doing because I'm a perfectionist i want this sucker crystal clear before i'm done <laughs> so so if you're still watching and you're watching me experiment with all this stuff um you're a patient person but uh this is this has been a learning experience and you know what it's been fun so so anyway clear resin total boats a sponsor of this of this channel they've been awesome to donate this stuff uh this new fathom Total Boat Resin worked out really well. I'll definitely be using it in the future. Um, thank you, Todd, for the uh, cherry wood burl. And, yeah. 
since I couldn't uh, fit this in a, a bucket, I couldn't get this in a five gallon bucket, um, I ended up doing my sand and floor flooring uh, padding mold system that I've been developing. Um, have you ever sat down to write a song or, or draw a picture and think, yeah, oh, that's original, and then realize you just ripped off some famous artist? I hate to claim that I've come up with this sand mold idea because I'm sure it's really just a derivation of somebody else's work. So if you're out there watching this going, hey, that was my idea, you're probably right. <laughs> so you should take the credit. But um, what I'm doing there is using floor padding that I get at you know Home Depot or online on Amazon. It go it's it's the a little thin pad that goes underneath your flooring to keep to keep the noise down. So it's a little foam rubber. Um, and what I'm using it for here is it's got a non-stick side that's glossy and it's rigid enough to maintain its shape, but flexible enough that I can form it around the wood. So I put it in semi-wet sand. Well, first step is a, you know, in this case it was an apple box or you know you could use Tupperware or whatever. Fill it full of somewhat wet sand so you can mold it. Um, before I put the sand in, I line the box with a, a, a garbage bag or a plastic bag in case something leaks. And then fill it full of sand, put the foam in there, mold it around my piece of wood so I don't have any wasted resin taking up pockets that they shouldn't. I'm putting little clips around the folds that kind of stick out. I, I kind of need to perfect that a little bit better. And uh, if you put it deep enough in the sand, it keeps the... the um, the wood from floating which is a big problem and in this project i didn't get it quite deep enough so it was floating just a bit so i ended up putting a little bucket in there with a rock to hold it down and that worked out fine um but that's that was kind of this project in a nutshell this specific piece is going to be put in a show it's called our um gift of freedom uh, it's held every year in the fall in utah um it's on October 8th and 9th. If you, I'll, I'll put in the, the video description a link to their Facebook group where you can get details on that. But there's a, it's a two-day event. They have a dinner on Friday and on Saturday have a whole bunch of stuff up for sale and for auction. Our booth with all the artists who have donated to Art for OUR, I shouldn't say all of them, but a lot of them we've been able to get to send their stuff will be displayed through both days and these items can be purchased uh, throughout the, the event for this specific event 100 percent of the proceeds go to operation underground railroad to help fight child trafficking around the world it's a huge problem and operation underground railroad has stepped up to fight it and they do such an amazing job i spend a lot of my free time making stuff and encouraging other artists to donate to art for our so we can raise funds for those folks Group started by Tim Ballard. They're amazing, worthy of your your energy and your time. Um, great group of people. I know a lot of the leadership, and they 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 take your money as sacred funds. You know they use it uh, very responsibly, and they're doing all kinds of stuff right now. I could go on and on and on about these guys. They're awesome. So every time you subscribe, like, and share my videos, it helps me raise money for Operation Underground Railroad. I think we just crossed the $25,000 mark for funds raised, which I'm so grateful for. You guys and your generosity is awesome. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a great one. See you in the next project.